Hello boys and girls. So after coming across a bunch of questions on how certain non-constructive principles relate to each other, I spent the better part of the last three days in the afternoons after work on doing just that, working out the shortest proofs uh, that I could come up with that um, tell you how strong various principles are, how they are related to one another. And I learned something, um, I, you know, I had to um, to spend some time with uh, the Consequenta Mirabilis, uh, which is interesting. Um, you see some, you know, properties of properties, properties of propositions, uh, if you try to find good proofs. And similar to the video that I did about a year ago, where I presented a bunch of uh, statements that are still valid and fairly strong in constructive arithmetic. This video gives a sort of overview um, of what you can expect and in which uh, situations you can use uh, these otherwise non-constructive principles also. Okay, so um, here is the main players uh, on screen that we are going to use and relate to one another. And I'm going to come back to them in a second. But here's already sort of a list of relations. We are going to prove all of those. Um, and then finally, here's a short list of things that are not even uh, provable in intuitionistic logic. Um, so without further ado, let me start um, just reciting these main players, right? So the first thing is the principle of excluded middle, aka the law of excluded middle, right? Uh, principle of excluded middle is sort of propaganda term where you don't alleviate it to like elevate it to a, a law status, you just say principle. Uh, but in any case, I mean, the statement that for all propositions hold, uh, that it is either true or that it is false. And here we are treating the negation of P as this implication P implies the absurd statement or false statement. This is a, like a standard thing to do. You don't have a connective um, which takes one argument, like, like propositional argument. Instead, you introduce this uh, constant and use the implication and everything behaves the same. Okay, so this is this statement. I wrote it down in a sort of weird way where to put the negation first, just so that these five statements here are in a sort of symmetric way or, uh, you know, that you can spot uh, how they are different or how they are related. Um, then there is the, um, the principle of explosion, right? The statement that if you have something um, proven and also proven its negation, if you, so if you have a contradiction, then anything follows from that. That thing, that statement is true in intuitionistic logic, but it's not true in minimal logic. and we are in particular working out in this video um, where this statement is necessary um, to prove certain relations of what it implies, right? I mean, principle of explosion is very believable in something like an arithmetic where you have a structure which is like generated, like, you know, you start with zero and then plus one, plus, uh, plus one, plus one, and you reach the whole structure. And then if, if there's a contradiction, then it's sort of, tumbles down and then you can prove zero is one and then you can prove everything. Um, otherwise, as a principle, um, it's a little bit harder to argue for. So from all the, the, the principle of in intuitionistic logic, this is maybe the most sus, if you will, or at least there people have investigated power consistent logics, for example, um, uh, that uh, deal with um, the absurd statement a little bit different. So uh, and also it's like from um, from from a uh, Curry Howard uh, perspective, there is the other uh, sort of rules of inference are a little bit uh, easier to to justify, I would say. But in any case, so these are uh, you know two standard things. Um, people know sort of what role they play, um, but the video is mostly about also relating the other strong uh, statements uh, to it, which in in uh, intuitionistic logic basically all then turn out to be um, equivalent, um, but we are going to see how they are equivalent, um, what properties 
the propositions have that that happens to be so and also what happens if you don't have explosion okay so the first thing is uh, uh, Peirce principle so this is this statement that says if you assume that um, from a proposition P implying uh, any other proposition the proposition follows then the proposition follows right so this is a little bit of a mouthful um, we are going to be mostly uh, like relating the proofs down to one special case of it which is the consequenta mirabilis or Calvin's principle which is more particular in the sense that it does not have here a Q and this doesn't hold like go for all Q's but you're sh really just looking at the absurd statement this so this basically says uh, a proposition is true whenever denying the proposition Im implies it okay um, not going to jump into the, the proofs right away you will see like how to work with that uh, in a second there and the other uh, last thing is uh, again more known it says if you have the double negation of a statement then the statement follows right famously also over intuitionistic logic equivalent to excluded middle um, so I'm going to state a bunch of um, these theorems as you see down here where I am a little bit more concrete I'm not just saying that if you assume uh, that principle holds for all propositions then this and this and this happens but um, I'm going to be more refined and say if you assume this instance of this principle then you can al already prove this and that so for example if I, if I write D and E um, index uh, negation of P then I mean the instance of the double negation elimination for this particular negated P and in this case this would be this, this statement, right? Which, uh, by the way, is also provable um, already in minimal logic. Um, so, um, yeah, with that said, let's jump into the proofs. Um, Okay, so here's a warm-up. If the principle of explosion holds for Q, right, then another way to write down the principle of explosion is like this, right? So if P implies anything, then uh, the negation, then P implies anything. This is basically just a rewrite. This is basically curry and curry of the principle of explosion. Um, and hence, if uh, you assume uh, explosion for Q, and have excluded middle which says that uh, p or not p always holds and we've just seen that not p implies p implies everything then um, you get that uh, either p holds or p implies anything and the other way uh, is also then uh, clear if, if this holds for everything then you get the excluded middle back from this right so curiously this statement uh, that follows um, in classical logic says for every statement P, you know, whatever you take P, either P holds or that P, because in classical logic is uh, it's false, implies any other statement, right? So anything is either true or implies everything. It's kind of kind of funny. Weaker then is this, um, um, I think Dina called that uh, Dirk Gensen's principle, that for any two propositions, either the first implies the second or the second implies the first right this is just a, a weaker version of this and this this is i mean this is equivalent to excluded middle not provable in, in intuitionistic logic and this is also something uh, if you adopt that in intuit intuitionistic logic you get an intermediate uh, logic and this is a fairly st a strong statement and kind of feels wrongish right because if, if you say um um Either me having eaten spaghetti yesterday implies you having eaten an apple yesterday or you having eaten an apple yesterday implies me having eaten spaghetti yesterday. This is a statement which classically is true, right? Simply because uh, in, in classical logic, P is either true or false and then you can uh, like derive this as we just did here. Um, sort of eerie here in, um, in common sense logic, okay. Um, so move. Let, we are going to use that, but let's move on. If you have p, and here I'm, I'm doing a derivation step by step, step by step, and the last um, line of this derivation of this block is going to be what we're really interested in. So if p holds, 
then by implication in, in uh, introduction, anything implies it, right? Something true is implied by anything in standard logic. Uh, and then differently, if R holds, uh, then then R implying P implies P. This is a version also like curry and curried version of modus ponens. And so this, uh, taking these together, weakening them, means either P or R implies this implication. Okay, and now if we take for R, P implies Q, then this statement becomes uh, the Pierce principle, right? So I'm going to scroll up for once, but uh, you should either write down or remind this. So Pierce principle is this, uh, for all P and Q, if this implication holds, then P holds. And this is exactly um, what we get here if we take this statement and for R uh, look at P implies Q, right? So we have that uh, that statement implies um, P's principle. And that statement is exactly what we have uh, shown here to be equivalent to exclude the middle, right? This is this anything is either true or implies everything statement. Okay, and therefore we conclude that if you assume explosion and excluded middle, uh, Pierce principle holds. We've just proven Pierce principle in classical logic, basically. Um, okay, so um, uh, we're going also to show the other directions and so on and so forth. But going on, here again, modus ponens. Um, since that holds, uh, this implication also holds, right? So th this thing is just. Uh, like this bracket here is just what is here. So if you assume this this long implication and then also P, P, as we just argued, implies this thing, which is the antecedent for this. And so you get R, R right? I'm just chaining a bunch of um, weird uh, implications. So this thing holds. Um, and if you now plug in uh, the absurd statement for Q and R, then you get the, the triple negation implies the negation. So we have proven just this. And since the other direction is also valid, um, actually, I'm going to prove this in this video as well, uh, we find that the triple negation and the single negation is the same thing, um, which is nice. And that statement here is the double negation elimination principle for P. So this, this thing is just this line here. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, then it's also worth mentioning that the um, explosion, you know, it does not hold in minimal logic where you don't assume it as a principle. But nonetheless, even in minimal logic, you can prove explosion for any negated statement, right? Just by modus ponens. So I'm quickly scrolling up. Explosion was this statement. If you have proven P and the negation of P, then anything follows. Well, this might not be um, derivable or assumed in minimal logic, but just by modus ponens, if you plug in P here, then you get the absurd statement and by implication in introduction, you can prove any statement of the form uh, negation of something, right? Or any disjunction in which a negation um, is part of it. So this is just a note. This is very, really like sort of obvious, more or less proof that even if you do not accept explosion, explosion is still valid for all statements that are of negated form. Okay. Um, so, also in minimal logic holds the following. Uh, if either P holds or not Q holds, then uh, Q implies this uh, disjunction. Okay, first, uh, Case analysis, if P holds, then um, the statement holds by uh, implication introduction. If not Q holds, then by what we just argued, the absurd statement also holds. So this is how you prove this. Um, okay, and um, using this, that means that if we adopt explosion, um, in which case from the absurd statement uh, anything follows, then basically we can just eliminate that, right? We can just substitute the, the false statement, the, yeah, the false statement for P, and we get this thing. And uh, this is 
uh, basically a form of the disjunctive uh, syllogism, right? So um, you have a disjunction of two things, and if two, like if one of them here and one of them here contradict each other, then the other thing must be the case. So this is disjunctive syllogism, which is not uh, valid in minimal logic, but it, it's valid in intuitionistic logic, i.e. if you adopt explosion. Okay. And um, since we've just argued above that the triple negation is the same as a single negation, right? Um, if a plug in for, instead of Q, we look at neg uh, neg negation of negation of Q, then we have here double negation and the triple negation collapses back to the single negation. So we get this thing. And then if you look at this, if you plug in for QP, then you would have here proven that the explosion implies that excluded middle for P um, implies the double negation elimination for P, right? So we have basically just um, derived um, double negation elimination from these two principles and some others uh, in classical logic. Actually, you know, as is often the case in the video, um, we can play this uh, deduction theorem game where we, I mean, here I stated in the form explosion and excluded middle implies, uh, entails double negation and elimination. But actually what we have proven is that for any statement, explosion says that the excluded middle statement in the logic implies the double negation elimination statement in the logic. So proving something in the logic is generally even nicer form than uh, proving it here with this turnstile uh, V dash symbol, but okay. Um, so uh, that's the case. So then going further, here there's a longer one, right? This is Frege's theorem. It's really also obvious if you think about it for a second and you can um, you know, play the game or you do the Curry-Howard proof if you want. Um, I'm not, you know, don't, don't wanna hold myself up too long here. So um, think through why the holds, it's kind of clear. Um, so if here now you say Q sh shall be the same thing as, as P, right? Uh, and you say R is a false statement, then this thing collapses to this um, negation introduction principle for P, right? So if a statement is contradictory in this sense, right? If you assume it, then you get a, a negation of it. Then um, the uh, negated statement holds. So from this very simple implication statement called Frege's theorem, we've proven this uh, negation introduction uh, special case that holds over like implication calculus, if you will, uh, at least uh, surely in minimal logic. Okay. So now if you, instead of P, we re replace P by an, uh, a negated statement, I call it P again, so uh, negation of P, then we get negation of P implies if negation of P implies negation of negation of P, then we get negation of negation of P. So we get this thing. And if you look again, this, uh, like, I'm not going to scroll up now, but this is a weak version of the um, consequenta mirabilis. The consequenta mirabilis is, is, like in the standard form, is the same statement, except with these double negations removed. Um, by the way, uh, since, um, since P implies the double negation of P, uh, this statement is actually stronger than the version where the first double negation is removed, right? So this statement, this is like formally a little bit uh, weaker, but okay. So we have uh, now shown that in minimal logic, this sort of uh, double negated consequence version of uh, Colvin's law or consequenta mirabilis also holds. And this is also sort of what motivated the whole video, me actually, really looking at this this sort of statement it basically says that um, from this statement now uh, that we have just uh, derived also immediately follows uh, the double negation introduction right so if p holds then anything implies p and then we can use this theorem to get the double negation there um, you can also arrive that um, you can actually also derive a, a generalized version of this statement where you say um, P implies that if P implies B, then B follows by modus ponens. And then if you let B 
just be um, the false statement, then this also follows. So this is like a simple thing. I'm, I'm just writing it down to state the following uh, theorem. If double negation elimination for P holds, then since we have this and we have double negation elimination, P and not not P is um, equivalent, right? And so in classical logic, this is obviously the case. P is equivalent to its double negation in classical logic. Okay. So this one is also now interesting, that the one which follows now. If you have the negation of a disjunction, then it follows like a negation of P or Q, a Q then it follows in particular that um, not P, right? Just look at the left case. That means that the negation of the excluded middle statement does the same thing, right? The excluded middle statement is exactly of this form with Q being the negation of P. Um, that means also by weakening, right? The negation of P implies the negation of P or P. And so that means that the negation of the excluded middle statement for P implies the excluded middle statement for P, right? This is in a way the canonical example of a statement for which this thing holds, right? The excluded middle statement is such a such a statement, but even if um, even if the excluded statement is not assumed to be true, it follows that the, by this derivation that we just did, the excluded middle statement implies that the negation of the excluded middle, excluded middle statement implies itself. This is fairly interesting if you think about it. Okay, and as we have already established this thing, this also this is also a derivation of the double negation of the excluded middle statement. Um, there's also other proofs of, th of those, and one of them I have give, uh, given in this, this video actually here. So here actually, I don't know if you see it, if you have to zoom in, but here I give another, an alternative proof of the, neg the double negation of the excluded mid middle statement. But this is also a slick proof where you prove this sort of property of the excluded middle statement that its negation implies it. Um, and that means, of course, that the double negation elimination statement for the excluded middle implies the excluded middle statement. And so in classical logic, uh, in particular, it, um, we have that uh, these are, are related to each other. Um, but again, here it says, since the, our turn style, our v, our v dash, means the minimal logic right, uh, statement, this means that the excluded middle statement um, for excluded, no, the double negation elimination statement for excluded middle, right, where, where it says not not p or not p implies p or not p. If this holds in minimal logic, then for the same p also follows the excluded middle statement. Um, and so we have that in intuitionistic logic where, expl uh, expl uh, where explosion holds, as you know, um, Excluded middle and double negation elimination are both equally strong. Imply they imply each other, really. And here I use this sort of more methodological impl uh, implication sign because I, you know, it's, I don't want to worry too much about the, the quantifier or predicate variables to make this completely formal, right? Even if you could easily do it, but I don't want to blow up this thing with formalism too much. Um, okay, so. Um, I said already that I argued already why the uh, contradiction implies all negated statements. That also means that a contradiction implies all double negated statements, clearly, right? Because uh, the negated statement of Q is also just some statement. And that means that uh, double negation elimination, if you can remove this thing here, means uh, double negation elimination also implies explosion, which is interesting, right? So. Minimal logic has neither excluded middle nor explosion. But if you assume double negation elimination in minimal logic, then you get classical logic, full classical logic. And it's not the, the same thing for adopting uh, excluded middle, interestingly, right? So there is an, there's an asymmetry. It's really not, uh, you cannot really say that one is stronger than the other, but with respect to removing also other principles, like if you remove also explosion, then the double negation elimination is actually stronger than excluded middle. Um, okay, so the, um, consequenta mirabil is 
um, for the excluded middle statement, the full consequent admirable list statement, right? So not, not this statement, but this same statement where the double negation is removed. Uh, consequent admirable list implies uh, excluded middle. We have just argued uh, a, a variant of that. So um, we find that consequent admirable list is actually fairly strong um, statement, right? It's basically, um, we will see in a second that it's actually equivalent to excluded middle over minimal logic. Uh, obviously, Pierce principle implies consequent admirable list. This is just a special case. And uh, Pierce principle also uh, implies, therefore, excluded middle. Um, and by this chain, we already um, saw the other direction um, here. By this chain, what we really have is that intuitionistic logic, so meaning if you have explosion, then exclude the middle, oops, I'm in the wrong line, not far enough. Exclude the middle uh, and uh, Pierce principle are also equivalent, which you already might have known. Uh, I don't know if you know, knew how strong Pierce principle is, but it's indeed equivalent to full classical logic. Okay, we are almost through. So um, here is a very simple case analysis statement that says, if P implies if Q implies P and C implies P, right? They have two statements with both, both imply P, and either of those is granted to hold, either Q holds or C holds, then using these implications, P hold, uh, follows either way, right? So if you plug in now for Q uh, P, then by the law of identity, this is trivially true. And then, um, For C, we take not P, then uh, the above statement reduces to this thing. And from this, this is also a sort of uh, consequent mirabilis, a, a weakened form. And then it's also immediate that um, excluded middle, so if this holds trivially, consequent mirabilis follows. And so what we really have, we have already seen the other direction. Um, as I advertised before, excluded middle and consequent admirabilis are actually equivalent, even in minimal logic. Um, and so then finally, we have the fact that if P, P implies Q, then the conjunction of P and Q is equivalent to P, right? Think about it for a second. Okay, and that means that uh, I could co have called this P's principle, so this is PP, yeah, I just forgot to substitute this. Pierce principle is therefore equivalent to this thing, right? And now if you, which is interesting in itself, right? It's a more complicated version of Pierce principle, if you will. If you plug in for Q the false statement, then you get uh, this the statement, consequent admirabilis is um, equivalent to this thing. And so if um, assume this, then this can be re reduced to the double negation uh, of P. Therefore, using the double negation elimination, you uh, get P. So this thing holds. And since we have proven this equivalence, we also get uh, consequent admirabilis here. Okay. Um, and so also really double negation elimination is equivalent to, um, to consequent admirabilis in intuitionistic logic here also, right? So putting things together. Um, okay, uh, we are done with the proofs. I'm at just at one half an hour, but we've covered a, a lot of ground. You, know, you can take this as a reference or send it to your constructive friends. Um, I think this is fairly valuable. What I really like, which I didn't really see before, is the fact that the um, the, the excluded middle statement for P has this property. If you negate it, then it must be true, it, not assuming anything else. It's kind of cute. Um, I want to emphasize that um, there's a bunch of statements uh, between intuitionistic logic and a classical logic, which are not uh, provable. And here are some of them. Whenever you adopt those, 
uh, you get basically a logic that is in between these intermediate logics. Um, these two uh, both give this girdle to mid logic, or then there's the weak excluded middle statement, basically the excluded middle statement for a negated statement, statement of negated form. And there is uh, the Morgan's law. These are like also some standard proofs that are seen more commonly than all this Pierce principle stuff. So I didn't uh, do it here, but I just want to mention it because it would also fit. Um, and then uh, I uh, also wanted to state this sort of important. Uh, this, this is first order logic, so it doesn't really fit into this video either. But this is sort of important because a lot of people don't know about this. And so they usually wonder. Uh, if you have um, this uh, embedding of intuitionistic logic in, in classical logic, uh, does it mean that these logics are really more or less the same? But but no, if you uh, drop the axioms, then you can get more complicated semantics out of it. And this is sort of one reason of uh, for it. So in particular, if A is an excluded middle statement, this disjunction, then the left hand side is true. but the nice thing is that in intuitionistic logic, this does not mean that double negation follows. And indeed, it's it's uh, possible to constructively uh, even reject it. And then you get other semantics of theories. For example, you can postulate that all functions are computable, this kind of stuff. OK, so uh, I will leave it at that. I hope that was informative to you. And I wish you a good evening.